Hello everyone! In this series of videos, we will see how to create an inventory system in Unreal Engine 5 using Brew. So for this video, I created a folder called Inventory. Right now the folder is empty. This is where I will store everything related to the inventory logic. I'm going to double click on it and open it. And in there, the first thing I'm going to do is create the actual inventory component. So I'm going to right click, choose Blueprint class, and I'm going to choose an actor component. I will call that BPC for Blueprint Component underscore inventory. This component will be attached to the main character. At the moment, we have nothing in there. And what I'm going to do is go into the blueprint for the third person character. I'm going to open that. I'm going to add a component. I'm going to look for inventory. You can see that BPC inventory pops up. Choose that. I won't change the name. I'm just going to leave that as BPC inventory. So now our character has an inventory, but the inventory is empty and there's nothing yet. We also do not have any items to pick up and put in this inventory. So I'm going to go back into my inventory folder. And in there, I'm going to create the logic to create as many objects as we want in the game that we can pick up and add into this inventory. So to create objects, I'm going to right click, choose blueprint. And in this case, I'm going to create a specific type of blueprints. I'm going to choose the structure blueprint or struct. I'm going to call that struct item. This blueprint here, when you open it, you can see that you have by default one variable and you have this button to add as many variables as you want. This structure will be the base of all the items in the game. This is where we're going to define every parameters and every variable related to objects. So for example, I'm going to change the first one to name and I'm going to change the type to string. So now every object that I will create using this pattern, this structure, will have one variable called name. This is definitely not enough for any objects in the game. So let's add a description too which also will be a string. And let's add another variable like, uh, let's say, a boolean called is weapon to know if the object we are picking up and will be using is a weapon. And from there, you can create as many variables as you want depending on the needs of your game. A good thing you can do is add a texture. So I'm gonna name that image, choose a texture, Texture 2D, and this is something you can use to have, for example, an icon in the UI of the inventory. So right now I'm going to stop here, leave those four variables, and I'm going to save this structural item. As I just mentioned, this struct will be the base of all the items in our game. So we have this base class, this base structure, but we don't have any items yet. So to create them, now it's going to be very simple. If you do right click and choose miscellaneous, you're going to look for a data table. You can see that you can choose a row structure here. You can see there's a lot of things available. None of them really matters to us, except the one at the bottom called struct item, which is the exact same name of the structure we just created. So I'm going to choose that and press OK. I'm going to rename this new object DT. So, oops, rename DT. And in that case, I want to create a sword, so I'm going to call that DT sword. We can see that once I open that, the Tara table seems to be empty. This is because we need to click on add at the very top, which will add a new row to the data table. The moment I do that, we can see a new row with all the variables we just defined in our structure item. So we can see image, if it's a weapon, name, description. So in this case, this object will just be called sword. Description where it's, uh, it's a sword, so just it's a sword. And yes, this is a weapon. I'm not going to choose the image because I don't have any sprites at the moment, but you can just look at that later on. And we'll see in a later video how to display this inventory into a UI to see what objects we have. And finally, one last thing I like to do is that by default, if I make everything slightly bigger, we can see that. This is all the variables we have, but the row name is simply called new row by default. 
So I'm just gonna right click and press rename and just call that item. So I'm gonna save that. And this is all we need to do for the actual structure of the item. So I can close this and call close the struct item too. And now I'm gonna go into the BPC inventory that we created at the beginning of this video. I'm gonna delete all the functions. I'm gonna save. And now I'm gonna create a new variables in here, which I will call inventory. And by default, we have a Boolean type. But that's not what we're looking for. What we want is a struct item once again, because this inventory variable will store all the objects that we are creating in the game, all the objects we can collect and add to the inventory or remove from the inventory. So I'm gonna click on struct item. If I simply leave everything at that, our inventory is gonna be able to only hold one item. So what I want to do is change the type, the variable type from single to array. So now the inventory can have multiple objects in it, not just one object, multiple ones. And an inventory system is pretty much an array of whatever objects exist in the game. So we just need this one variable called inventory. Make sure this is an array of the type of things we want to store in the inventory, which in our case is a bunch of struct items. I'm gonna compile, everything seems fine. So now that we have an inventory, we also can have objects. We need a way to add those objects into the inventory. So I'm gonna create a functions here and I'm gonna call that add to inventory. So this add to inventory function, well, what we want to do is get our inventory and we want to add things to it. So from the inventory pin, I'm gonna drag it and look for add. In this case, the add I want is the add from the array utilities section. I don't want to use the add operator because this is not what doing. And I'm just gonna click on add here. We can see that we can connect that to the function. We can add anything to the inventory, but we need to add an item here and we don't really have an item yet. This is because in the inputs of the add to inventory function, I need to create a new input, which I will call an item. We want to add one item to the inventory. And because the item follows the same structures we've been creating, I'm gonna look for struct item. And I can connect that into this add function. So what we're doing is very simple, is that we have a function to add an object to the inventory. This object needs to fit the pattern of the inventory which is a structure item, which we just created. And this is it. This is pretty much all we need to do to add any objects to the inventory. So I can save and compile. Everything seems to be working fine. So now that we have our logic to add an item to an inventory, we need to find an actual item in the game. And we need to be able to interact with this object and pick up the object to put it into the inventory. We have the logic to have the actual inventory, but we need this pickup logic too. In my case, I have a BP interactable class here where I implemented an interact interface. I won't dive too much in this video on how to do that. However, I have another video that explains how to create an interface to have an interaction with objects in Unreal Engine. So I'm gonna go from there and I will put the link to this video in the description. In this case, I'm gonna open this BP interactable I have and I have this interact interface that's already implemented. From there, what I'm gonna do is I want to cast this object to the third person character. And to cast, I need an object here, which is get controller. If I compile, we can see this is not get controller, it's get player character. And if I compile, this should be working fine. So I have my event track that's linked to the cast to the, to the third person character. And as the object, we have the get player character. From there, as the BP third person character, I want to get the inventory component we created. So get BP's inventory. 
And from this, I want to use the function add to inventory. And I want to connect the cast into this function add to inventory. If I compile, everything seems fine, but we're not any we're not adding any item yet. We can see that the pin for whatever item we want to add is not connected to anything. So in this case, for this BP interactable, is I'm gonna create a new variable called object to loot. You can find a better name than that, but uh, hopefully this is clear enough for the purpose of this tutorial. And this, I won't look for a structural item this time, I will look for a data table. So if I look for data table, here we go, data table, object reference. So I'm gonna get this data table, but we can see that it won't connect to the item yet. This is because we need a function from the data table. So if I drag the pin from this object to loot variable and get and look for get row, we can see that we have a utilities function called get data table row. And this is what we're gonna want. So I'm gonna move the pins from before, drag that a bit on the right. It is connect the cast into this get data table row. In this case, I'm looking for specific data table, which is the object to loot we want. And I'm gonna change the row name to item. And once the row is found, I get row found and I connect that into the add to inventory. And once we have something, the add row will be connected to the item. So to explain a bit more on what's happening here, we created a structural item and from there, we can create as many data tables as we want that will represent every object that we can store into the inventory of our game. In that case, we have one object so far called data table sold or DT sold. It has multiple variables and it is stored as a data table. What we're doing here when we are interacting with an object is that we have an interaction where we can be able to pick up the object. Once this happens, we need to cast that to the third person character so we can access the inventory component we created at the beginning. Once we access this inventory component, we can access the function we called add to inventory, which allows us to add an item to the inventory. However, we need to know what item we are adding. To do that, we are creating a variable called object to loot, which will be a data table, which will store the values of whatever objects we want to have. And to get from a data table to an actual item to add to the inventory, we just need to use this function get data table row, which will simply tell us all the variables of this data table and convert that into the structural item so we can add that directly into the inventory. And the last touch that will make everything make more sense now is I need to change this object to this variable from private to public by simply clicking here on the I button. I'm gonna compile and save. My BP interactable, I will drag this object into the world. And once this is into the world, we can see that we have this, this object to loot variable here that is by default empty. And once I click here, I can choose different data tables. So in that case, we only have one called DT sold, but let's say I want to create a new one. So I'm gonna create, go into the inventory, control C, control V on data sold, and then I'm just gonna rename that to, let's say, data shield. Just gonna open that very quickly and change the text to shield and text to is shield. So I'm gonna leave that as a weapon even though it's not really true. And now if I click back into my BP interact symbols in my scene, into object to loot, you can see that we have a new object, data shield or data sword here. So here this one is gonna be a sword and this other one here is gonna be shield. So for every object that you can collect in the world, you will be able to access the object to loot, or in other words, all the informations regarding this object directly into your interactable. And to make sure everything is fine, in the inventory, the BPC inventory blueprint, I will simply add a print string. And in here, I'm gonna get a break structural item we can see all the values here, let's say name. 
So by doing that, I'm getting all the viables of the social item we're gonna pick up and add to the inventory. And I'm just gonna get the name one to print to make sure that every time we add to the inventory, uh, it's working. I should just change the code a bit to make sure that we have a text that makes more sense. So I'm appending two strings together, one saying that I added the following items to the inventory, and then it will add the name of whatever items we're picking up. I'm gonna save. Now that I'm in play mode, I can see that when I come to those objects, I have the pickup text for the interaction logic. If I press my E button, you can see that we added to the inventory the following item, shield, and if I go here, it's gonna say sword. Added item to the inventory, sword. So this is it for this video. We saw how to create items, how to add them to an inventory, but in the next video, we'll see how to update this inventory when you have multiple items. And later on, we also see how to display an inventory UI to see what is actually currently in our inventory. So this is it for this video, and I will see you in the next one.